Hey guys, what's up? It's Amina. So today I am super excited. Today I'm going to be talking about what happens in a traditional Sudanese wedding from start to finish, okay? So first things first, let's say a man and a woman meet and they want to get married. First thing that has to happen is the man has to go to the woman's family and ask for her hand in marriage. It's very traditional. It's very old school if you compare it to like Western society, but it definitely still happens in Sudan. You need permission before you can get married. And a lot of people that don't have their family's permission are not even able to get married. And that is because in Sudan, people really, really respect their family and their elders. So if their family says something, most of the time they will listen to that. So the next thing that happens is called Sed al Mal. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. But basically that just means bringing money. So the groom will bring money for the bride and she can use that money on any wedding expenses. So maybe she'll buy herself clothes with that money or even the groom sometimes will buy clothes. But even if he buys clothes, he still has to bring some money too. Also what happens is the groom brings the bride lots of beautiful gold. So she gets gold, she gets money to cover for the wedding expenses. And he also brings kind of like candy. And I'll show a picture of how it looks. It's a really really beautiful setup so fancy the candy that you buy can't be like any regular old candy we're talking about good quality candy like Macintosh if you're Sudanese you know what I'm talking about also include perfumes lotions creams stuff to make the bride smell good look good if the groom wants to bring even more he could bring Shayla Dukan it's mainly food but like sugar tea flour oil so then before the wedding by two months, okay, two months before the wedding actually happens, the bride is basically going to be on lockdown. Just kidding. But she's not gonna leave her house for about two months. And that's because there's a couple things that she needs to do. First of all, there's something called dukhan that traditionally brides do. So dukhan is actually, it means smoke, but it comes from a wood. So they take this wood and then they burn it. And this wood has a lot of different health benefits. It makes your skin really, really smooth, soft. It also makes your skin have a really good smell because the wood itself smells good there will be like a little hole in the ground and then they'll put the wood in there and then like light it so smoke starts coming out so then the bride will remove her clothes wrap herself with a blanket and then kind of just sit in there after the dukhan typically the bride will do something called dilka which is kind of like a body scrub but it smells so 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 delicious i'm telling you it's one of my favorite scents in the world kind of looks like dirt but it has the appearance like that but you basically rub it all over your body just like a body scrub and it leaves your body smelling so good like irresistibly good you know that's why it's for brides only because the smell is just so so sweet she will keep doing that throughout these two months and also if the bride is skinny Typically in Sudan, she will try to gain a little bit of weight before her actual wedding day. That is because in Sudan, we're a little bit different from the rest of the world. In Sudan, we love our thick women. That is definitely a fact. I think it's because in Sudan, a lot of people are very, very skinny. So it's the opposite for us. Like thick women are seen as beautiful. So after that, after the bride kind of prepares herself, the groom will then reserve the hall. So the hall is where the wedding is actually going to take place however the bride is the one who has to pay for the actual dinner that's going to happen the bride's family also another thing that happens before the big wedding day is the bride's mother will make basically like sweets traditional Sudanese sweets kak, which I love I'll put a picture of it and fatair and this is actually going to go to the groom's mother so a small group of women will take these things they'll go to the groom's house and sit together with the groom's mom and then each one of them will actually get a gift. Before, we're still before, the wedding hasn't happened yet. Before the big wedding day, there's going to be two parties that happen, one for the man and one for the woman. These are typically pretty big. You bring in a singer, you have food, you have desserts, you eat and you dance, and they call this the henna party. They both wear henna in Sudan. That's a little bit different from the rest of the world. But yeah, the groom, or if it's his brothers or his best friend, 
they will wear some henna on their hands. The groom will wear it on his feet too. Ragis al aris. Ragis al aris. So this means the bridal dance. This is something that is culturally, traditionally unique to Sudan. I don't think there's any other place in the world that performs this. <laughs> So a little bit before the wedding happens, the bride will basically perform a dance. In today's world, it's only for women. No men will be allowed to be there except for the groom. He can come. Sometimes the groom doesn't stay the whole time, you know, trying to be like humility. You know, he'll... Because the thing is, during this time, the bride will not be covered up. So in Sudan, all of the girls have to cover up. But in this time, she's not going to be covered up. She's going to be dressed beautifully, makeup and all of that. And she's going to be dancing in front of all of these people. <laughs> and the groom is allowed, but no, no other man is allowed traditionally okay but you see now things are kind of starting to change and i've seen places where men and women were allowed for the bridal dance but that's rare but yeah the bride will basically perform many dances for a couple of hours throughout the night there's also a really funny part during this where the bride has to basically fall and the groom must catch her it's so serious to the point where she actually will hire a dancer before this to teach her how to dance, get all the dance moves right. Dance moves that I'll, I'll say are very sensual. It's very sensual, very, you know, private for the groom. Okay, let's just say it like that. And other women too, it doesn't matter. Now, on the day of the wedding, the groom, first of all, will go up and he's gonna pick up his bride. She's gonna get her makeup done and everything. The groom will pay for that and then they're gonna go and take pictures, so professional pictures. After they finish taking their professional pictures, they go to the wedding hall where all of the family's waiting. Family, people from your neighbors, people that aren't even invited. <laughs> A lot of people will be there. So these weddings are always packed, and I think that's what makes them really, really fun. But yeah, they'll finally show up probably a little bit later than usual. That's just how it is. <laughs> and then this is where the actual wedding part of it happens. Traditionally in Sudan, the bride wears red. We don't have the white dress as traditional, although in today's world, you will see white most of the time. But Sudanese brides wear a red tobe, beautiful red tobe with gold, traditionally. And the man also will have on kind of like a white jalabiya, but it also it'll he'll wear red somewhere in there as well. During the wedding, most of the time, you have live singers there. You might have dancers there. The way that it's set up is basically in this hall, you'll have many, many, many tables where people can sit at. And then people will go around and they'll offer you drinks. Like you want a Fanta, you want a Sprite, you know, whatever. Then you have some food there as well. And, and then you have a big space for the dancing. There's also a cake so a lot of the stuff is kind of similar to like the western traditions that we see and then there's the milk tradition so basically the bride and groom have to share a glass of milk together and try to be the first one to spray the other person in the face yeah <laughs> the wedding is definitely videotaped and the groom pretty much pays for all of this he pays for the singer he pays for the taping of the wedding and then afterwards of course they go on their honeymoon and the groom has to pay for the honeymoon as well also it's a habit too that the next day after the big wedding the bride's mother will make like this big beautiful breakfast and then a group of women will take the breakfast over to the groom's mother's house and they eat and typically the groom's mother will give them presents so maybe she'll give like a gold ring for them for each person so yeah that's something another tradition that we have so anyways that is pretty much everything that happens during a traditional Sudanese wedding hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if I missed anything leave a comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video Bye. And also perfumes, lotions, creams, just everything that the bride will need for, or the bride, the groom, the, the what is, the bride, yeah. Everything that, the, the groom and the bride. Yeah, the bride, yeah.